Hello world YouTubers, I am Dweller Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into the Chuckle Storm Isaiah's coverage for August 4, 2020. Before we get on with today's video, however, it would be really awesome if you guys did hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for 900 subscribers. We are almost there. We're less than 100 away from the big ultimate goal of 1,000 subscribers. So please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, as well as ring the bell notification so you don't miss my next upload. Also, watch the whole video because getting to the goal of 1,000 subscribers in monetization, we're getting very close. And you guys watching the whole video will help the Weather Dude's channel out a lot. So please consider watching the whole video as well. Please do. And also like and share this video with your friends. Thank you. Now let's go on with today's video. And if you guys want me to say it the other way, Isaias. There you go. All right, you can call it both names. But today, we're going to be continuing to, to track Tropical Storm Isaias as it moves through the Mid-Atlantic. And I would have done a video a couple hours ago, but sadly, the Weather Dude... Um, in, in my county here, we actually had at least a couple tornado warnings, and I, I did have to take shelter um, in, a, in the lowest level possible, which hopefully you guys uh, are doing as well. All right, so, so looking at Isaiah's location here, uh, you can see that it is moving right through eastern Maryland. This says of 11 o'clock this morning. Um, you can see there's your storm center, and on the right front side here, we have some really strong winds. Matter of fact, let's actually pull up the wind gusts. I guess some of the wind gusts down the Jersey Shore exceeded 80, 85 miles an hour, which the sustained winds with the low center corner of the National Hurricane Center, uh, latest um, 11 o'clock update, the sustained winds are still 70 miles an hour. All right. And to those of you, like uh, where I was, we also got about, I think the rainfall rates at one point were about five to six inches per hour. Okay. Rainfall totals were, um, but that was, well, the rainfall rates weren't five to six inches an hour the whole time, but the rainfall, I think, did come out across the Atlantic, at least where I was anyway, about about four to six inches of rain, up, upwards of six inches of rain we got, all right? And, and right along the I-95 quarter, and even just a little bit west of I-95, but right along I-95 and west, um, where I am here, you, you that's where you definitely got the heaviest rainfall. So if you're like, if you're in southeastern Pennsylvania, northern Delaware, extreme western Jersey, uh, northeastern Maryland definitely got hit really bad, as well as Washington, D.C., all right? And there's just a lot of wind going, going on in the background. Like, if you were here, you could really definitely hear the wind. Um, I don't know if you can hear the wind, but if you can, I'm very sorry. Hopefully you can still hear me because um, the wind is definitely whipping here. So if you're getting a lot of the rainfall, which you're going to be getting, trust me, from I've been, I mean, we're th I'm through the rain part of the storm because that usually comes on the um, front side. So you, when you first get the storm, it's mainly going to be rain. There will be some wind as well, but all the wind, trust me, is going to be coming on the backside because at first there really wasn't much wind. But now that I'm, now that the storm is, a lot of the rainfall has passed, it is definitely um, more so a lot of a wind on the back side and according to the NAM model at one point yeah here you go so looking at this here if you live in western Jersey if you live in southeastern Pennsylvania even northern Delaware here you got this this thin narrow line on the back side here where wind gusts could be reaching as much as 62 all right 63 close to 70 down Atlantic City 70 mile an hour wind gusts all right because here is your here's like your storm center it's right in here right, according to the NAM model uh, by one o'clock this afternoon but this is quickly lifting up to the north. Like this, this definitely came later than expected. I think the storm center is actually moving at about 35 miles per hour now, which is this thing is booking. That is very, very fast uh, for a tropical storm. So this is definitely, this is definitely unlike anything I've I've experienced. I mean, I do. I was a, I was alive for Hurricane Sandy, okay, and Irene, but I don't I don't vividly uh, remember them all too well. But this one, um, definitely one that go in go in the history books here this was really definitely a very strong storm um very and, and not, i mean it's not just about the intensity of the storm it makes it memorable it's what it does to your specific location and even as it moves through uh, new hampshire i remember the european model saying that the winds in new hampshire could reach a hundred miles per hour all right now granted this could potentially be mount washington this could be the, the mountainous areas it looks like there are some mountains here but still a hundred mile per hour winds as it moves to New Hampshire. And that's not because the storm is strengthening. Matter of fact, the storm is actually weakening, mainly because, again, it's a lot of mountainous location. Right? And it's a pretty mountainous location up there in New Hampshire where we can see those 100 mile per hour winds. Now, look at this thing on satellite. You can see it is out of here. All right, we got a little, we got our final band of rain here. Um, it's still a lot of wind oh, combined with a little heavy, a little bit of some uh, some steady rainfall. If you live in, you know, DC, it's already starting to clear up. But the good thing is, um, I think Isaiah was dealing with this the entire time, the entire lifespan. It's always had, a, that's why he really didn't get a chance to strike it too much. It always had a little bit too much of, uh, a little too much drier on the back side of it. The wind shear eventually gave in, all right? Because there was, now, obviously now there's a decent amount of wind shear, 
All right, but the dry air is something that's always stuck with this thing, and it's been right on the back side. So the good news is, is that once you get out of the thick of it, once you're out of that eye wall, like like I was just going through it over the past hour or two, once you're through that eye wall, conditions will quickly improve. All right, and that's also and also conditions will will quickly improve because the storm is moving so fast. So conditions are going to deteriorate very quickly. They're also going to improve very quickly. All right, so as you can see, there is the edge of the rainfall already moving through. This is more so more so satellite imagery. You can see here's your, dry, your dry air starting to make its way into D.C., Virginia. All right, I mean, when we were looking at it yesterday, a couple of days ago, we were I was actually the Mid Atlantic was supposed to be in the thick of it right about now. All right, maybe just about a half hour or so ago. So this definitely was moving a little faster than they expected. All right, but that didn't mean that, that we didn't see as much rainfall because the rainfall was still very, very heavy. I'll be showing you that, showing that to you guys as well. So this is kind of from a few model runs ago, the high resolution model. This is still the 12Z model run, just to kind of see how it really went. Uh, you can see there's the low, it lifted up. Southeastern Pennsylvania really got a lot of heavy rainfall. I've just, I've just been watching a lot of footage here. Actually, I did upload uh, five minutes of Tropical Storm Isaiah's coverage where I was in the mid-Atlantic. So if you guys want to check that out, please consider checking that out um, after this video. Uh, that is that was my other upload that I did earlier today. Um, but you can see the pressure is still 998 millibars. And that's the thing. This thing was so dynamic that it, it didn't get a chance to weaken over land. All right, so for a couple of reasons. One, it was interacting with a, um, a very strong front over here. All right, sometimes it's like playing with fire. When when these tropical systems play with fronts, they can kind of take away their strength. They can, but in this case, because of the dynamic atmosphere, and it, it really helped to get, to get this storm going. Also, this when this storm was moving over land, it was moving very, very quickly. So when a storm moves very, very quickly over land, it doesn't get a chance to weaken as much because it's moving so fast. Land's like, whoa, what's going on? All right. So when a storm moves at normal speed over land, like 10, 15 miles an hour, that gives it a chance to really, you know, kick at the storm. But when it's moving so fast like this, all right, that definitely uh, gives it less of a chance to weaken. Also, the storm, the low, I mean, is actually moving over, if not actually moved over Chesapeake Bay. So that little area of water that moved over, and I'm not saying it's going to help strengthen the storm, but, you know, every little part of water counts. Every, every little patch of water definitely does count here. So I'm going to refresh this. All right, and kind of show you guys uh, kind of the rainfall that we've had uh, in some spots. And it, it, it's really, truly amazing. So we're going to go to past 24-hour precipitation. Um, and let's zoom out. Let's actually start down the Carolinas. All right, and we're going to be looking at the Northeast as well. Starting in the Carolinas, even Northwestern South Carolina um, in some spots, and at the yellow and orange is shading about one to three inches of rainfall, even uh, from patchy spots from Athens to Seneca, South Carolina, Greenville, just Northwest of Columbia, Columbia itself, especially just west of town, Columbia, you really lucked out, all right? But if, when you go down towards Charleston, Charleston, um, we Charleston, we, we kind of always thought you weren't going to get as much rain. Um, but still, Charleston uh, did pick up, all right? It looks like about, looking at the key on the right here, about close to two inches of rainfall in Charleston. And you know, the way Charleston is, that can still cause a lot of problems. Why? Well, if we zoom in really, really close to Charleston, all right? Now it would be better if I showed you this guy shows you this on Google Earth. You can see here's the here's the Atlantic Ocean, and there's where the ocean gets a chance to really come in. And then you got all these rivers. I was looking at the I can't exactly remember the names off the top of my head. You got all these rivers here, and downtown Charleston sits right at the merging point of those three rivers. All right, or even even the uh, fourth when I count this one over here. All right, so that's why Charleston, even with a couple inches of rain, I mean, can be it can cause a lot of problems. I'll be talking about the surge as well because surge has been happening and it's going to continue to happen. Just southwest of Georgetown, South Carolina, we picked up about four to even close to five and a half inches of rainfall. I, but I think, actually, we got more rainfall in the mid, we're getting more rainfall in the mid-Atlantic than the Carolinas. More, uh, more rainfall in the, in the northern mid-Atlantic. Widespread, central, eastern, North Carolina, we're talking about widespread one to three inches of rainfall. A couple little pockets here of that darker orange, maybe that brighter red, maybe three and a half, close to four inches in North Carolina. But uh, OBX here in the Outer Banks, uh, you guys definitely, I think in the rainfall, not the surge category, but in the rainfall category, I think you may have lucked out a little bit, especially towards Kitty Hawk, where you guys may have picked up close to an inch of rainfall, but nothing like we're seeing in the mid-Atlantic currently. Now here is the, where we've seen a lot, a lot of rainfall. All right, southeast of Washington, D.C., we're talking about near the Chesapeake, uh, Cambridge, Maryland, up eastern Maryland here, and this is just the rainfall that, we ha that we've had so far. All right, northern Delaware up to 95 quarter, just in the uh, west of Philly. And actually, the power is flickering right now. Um, just west of Philly, up uh, 476 here. And let me zoom out, give you a wider view. This is the region 
where we have seen four to six plus inches of rainfall uh, so far. That, that could be the end of it, especially for Maryland and Delaware, but for parts of eastern Pennsylvania, it's still, all right, it's still on, uh, the rainfall is still ongoing. Matter of fact, my backyard, there was, I mean, there has been, it was like a raging river. Like the whole thing, the whole backyard was like just covered in water. And actually, when I went to the back, that's where you really saw because I actually, there's like a little, like a little ditch at the very end of, the, of my backyard. So the water, it, it, every time, it doesn't happen too much. It hasn't happened too much lately, even with heavy rainfall events. But especially with this, when the rainfall was raining heavy, the water was basically going uh, up almost to my knees. So very, very heavy rainfall. Um, and you can see this, this storm will be continuing to move through the Northeast. All right, it doesn't have to be four, five, six inches of rainfall to cause significant problems. I mean, you look well outside of this, look at the widespread quarter, anywhere in this yellow shade, this is where we've seen at least two inches of rainfall. All right, look how much area this is covered. Already parts of Northeastern PA, Northern Jersey, Southern New York, all right? We have seen two inches of rainfall just about. All right, and this goes all the way down and up into the Carolinas as well, all right? So let's take a look now at the excessive rainfall outlook from the Weather Prediction Center here. And not too long ago, they had the area, the most intense, like the reds and the pinks, the moderate to high risk of flash flooding right in this zone. They seem to have moved it now, so they are definitely updating this. Um, it has moved on a little bit now, still we got a marginal risk uh, in that green area, but really got to focus in on the yellow, especially the red and the pink. That's where we really got to focus in on here. Basically from southeastern Pennsylvania, through Pennsylvania, Jersey border, up uh, through New York, Poughkeepsee, uh, through northwestern Vermont, that is where you have to watch out for the flooding. If you're in the red, in the pink especially, but even in the yellow, we can still have a lot of problems as well. So that's your excessive rainfall outlook for today. Um, here's a better look at a National Hurricane Center here. So there is your region you really have to focus on right here. But good news is it looks like it, the majority of it is trying to stay in northwestern New York City. Definitely Boston. I think since it's tracked a little bit, little bit farther west than expected, um, it's tracking more in a motion like this. So I think Boston, Nantucket... Like, even Nantucket is not shaded in anything. So, you know, Cape Cod, Nantucket, you guys may not even see anything out of this. Now, the surge, all right, this is one view of it, all right, but there's definitely one, another thing from the surge I do want to show you guys. This is just one map from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, they are forecasting one to two feet here. We got one to three feet for the Chesapeake Bay. That's been happening. Delaware Bay, Jersey Shore, everywhere is one to three feet, all right? Even up, I mean, that's the thing, though. While Martha's Vineyard and Cape Cod may not get the Rainfall, you guys will def definitely get the surge, as well as Long Island here. All right, especially the uh, southern coast of Long Island, because the wind at one point will be coming in like this at some point. Same thing for the southern coast of Connecticut. Uh, northern part of Long Island, on the northern coast of Long Island, the water will actually be blowing away and onto the Connecticut coastline. All right. So, looking at the rainfall totals, this is from 8 a.m. today through 8 a.m. on Thursday. All right, so, this is, the, this is additional rainfall starting from 8 o'clock this morning. Um, and we can still see maybe another couple inches of rainfall, not out of the question, but I think most of it is trying to taper down. I mean, but they may up, they may or may not update this map. All right, but definitely, we've definitely seen a few inches of rainfall um, and maybe another up to an inch to come, some light to moderate rain. We look at the wind probabilities. We have almost 90, we have a 90 to 100% chance of tropical storm force winds extending all the way into Vermont and New Hampshire already. And the storm hasn't even, not even close to being there yet. Well, it, it's, I mean, mileage wise, it's not, but because of how fast it's moving, it's definitely getting closer. That Because when a fast moving storm like this, we can really tell, you know, say where it's going because, I mean, it already basically has its future planned out for it almost, right? Even, we even have a 30 plus chance, even a 50 plus percent chance to see tropical storm force winds all the way into the international border up through Canada, all right, west of Maine. So that's how, that's how significant the storm has been. Um, what are the chances of seeing winds of 58 miles an hour plus? Uh, across Maryland through New Jersey, um, including Delaware as well, south extreme eastern Pennsylvania, like east of Philly here, about a 70 to 90% plus chance to see winds of 58 miles an hour plus. And that classifies it as um, a mid to strong tropical storm. All right. No chance of hurricane force winds. A hurricane force gust are definitely happening, that's for sure. But no hurricane force sustained winds because this is not officially a hurricane. I want to go through and look at the um, alerts that we have. So from Northeastern North Carolina, still Eastern Virginia, the Chesapeake, we still have tropical storm warnings and flash flood warnings in effect. Uh, we make our way a little bit farther north here. Here's Maryland. DC is still under, a, um, I believe, a flash flood watch, and this may actually be a flood warning. Um, but DC may still be in a tropical storm warning. Darker red is flash flood warning. We have that through Northeastern Maryland, okay, as well as 
uh, through Northern Delaware, through Pennsylvania, through Allentown. Uh, we even have flood advisories well outside of that for Lancaster, for Scranton, for Newark, New Jersey. All right, then we got severe, then we got special marine warnings through Long Island. Um, and tropical storm warnings also go up the Maryland, Delaware, Jersey shoreline. All right, and if we continue to follow this, this still goes up the coast through uh, New York City, downtown New York City, as well as still tropical storm warnings um, are in place for um, Cape Cod. Tropical storm warnings, meaning we can still see winds of 39 miles an hour plus and some rainfall um, anywhere in this region. But we also do have a flash flood watch again. Uh, for parts of Bannington and through um, Vermont as well. All right, so now this I haven't really showed you guys before. I've actually recently discovered this uh, somewhat recently. And so here's the cone of the storm right here. All right, here's the cone. This is where the storm is, is going, so to speak. Um, so the first thing I want to take a look at is the wind threat. Anywhere in this orange shade, uh, this orange shade here. So basically from the Chesapeake, from Maryland, uh, Virginia, um, up through Delaware, Eastern Maryland, Eastern Pennsylvania, all of New Jersey, New York City, even through Albany, New York. That is where we have the potential, as you guys can see here, I'll prove it. Um, potential for winds of 58 to 73 miles an hour sustained. This is in gusts. And in that yellow area, that's where we have the potential to see winds of 39 to 57 miles an hour potential. Um, and that's definitely for Boston, for Cape Cod. But anywhere in, the, in these gray regions, that's where our max wind potential is now less than 39 miles an hour. So that this any of these gray regions is where tropical storm winds have kind of died down and maybe some still some gusty winds at 20 30 miles an hour but richmond washington you washington dc you're not in that yellow region anymore baltimore has now entered the yellow region so meaning your tropical storm uh, your winds have been knocked from 58 to 73 down to 39 to 57. now here's what i want to show you guys the storm surge threat has gone up you might be able to see where uh from north carolina have a couple spots of three feet but north carolina here through uh, through Maryland, Chesapeake, the Delaware Bay, the Jersey Shore, Long Island, up through Cape Cod. This is where your storm surge can be greater than one foot above normally dry ground. But as a widespread region inside the Delaware Bay up the uh, PA River here, as you can see at the Delaware Bay along the Delaware shoreline, up the river here through Philly and the Jersey Shoreline, all in the Delaware Bay, this is where we can have storm surge greater than three feet above normally dry ground. It's a shame I couldn't find the weather cameras because if I could show you guys weather cameras, that'd be really nice um, for any of these regions. But we're talking about more than three feet now of storm surge because the wind has been relentless. We've seen gusts going at past 80 miles per hour. And here's the flooding rain threat. Now this is, now it cuts off because we're talking about just the East Coast here, so that's why it does cut off. Obviously we still have a, a flood threat for Lancaster, but it's not in this uh, so-called region, so it's cut off, so to speak. But they do have a more serious threat in that purple region for places like Reading, but actually I feel like a lot of the worst of the weather has been in the in this red region here, including Allentown, including Wilmington, including Annapolis. Um, DC now, you have some still in that orange color getting ready to enter yellow because the rain threat is starting to taper off. Um, and again, in that red and purple, major to extreme flooding rainfall. And I will be showing you guys too in, later on in the video as well as the rivers, all right? Because the rivers are definitely going to be a very serious problem as well. Um, let's look at the radar. All right, where is this storm now? Let me actually refresh this. Uh, I did just set this up a few minutes ago, but I want to make sure it's all refreshed for you guys. Um, and it looks like the storm is moving out. We got some, we got some banding on the backside, but as you can tell by the DBZs, it is, it's, it's very low. All right, it's some very light to moderate rainfall. All the heavy stuff, the so-called eye wall of the storm. It's hard to believe that this far inland, we're still having an eye wall with this. I mean, I just dealt with the eye wall not too long ago. All right, it was a pretty serious wind and rain. Um, you could you should be able to see that um, in my in my uh, epic, epic uh, tropical storm Isaiah's footage video, my other video for today. So again, if you haven't checked that out already, please do check that out after this video. But look how the we have some banding going on offshore as well. So that's pretty amazing. We'll see if this band here can get drawn this way. Maybe it'll scrape Long Island. Um, but we are seeing, starting to see the rainfall move out, Scranton, Wilkes Barre, and now it's starting to move through towards you guys. And again, I was dealing with, with rainfall rates more than six inches an hour at times, all right? Now, like I said, I wasn't dealing with six inches per hour rainfall rates for four hours. I mean, at times it got to that rate, but mostly it was about a couple inches of rain, a few inches of rain an hour, which is still very serious. Through Eastern Pennsylvania right now, they got rainfall rates. Now, sometimes it does go a little bit under. National Weather Service sometimes does. Um, but if you look at all the news, all the news outlets, they will say that this as well, two, three inches of rain per hour is what we've been seeing. And I think it's actually been a little bit more than that. But you can see it has been starting to definitely move out now. And if we look at the 
storm total precipitation uh, from extreme corner northeastern Delaware, eastern Pennsylvania, according to the National Water Service. I think it's actually a little bit more than this, but we've seen five, five and a half inches of rainfall uh, since the start of this storm. Even outside of that, well, three, four, five inches of rain, just like we were expecting here. All right. And looking at the rivers here to, to kind of end this video here, I want to take a look at some rivers down through the Carolinas. Now, as it looks, as it stands, I don't see too many rivers flooding. All right, there's one gauge that's in um, near minor flood stage, which is near action stage in South Carolina. I see one in North Carolina, but honestly, I think that was actually there before um, East Aeas actually came in. So I don't think that was actually tied to the storm. So looks like we haven't had too many river flooding problems yet. All right, but we can still see some flooding problems from the rivers. There, I, I was actually, where I was, we're actually under 10 alerts at one point, 10 different alerts. I can try and name them. I believe it was tornado warning, flash flood warning, river flood warning, tornado watch. There was like three different flash flood warnings. I, I, I might have repeated them. I don't know. There was a lot of a lot of alerts. So let's take a look at some of the rivers, river gauges here, and you'll be really amazed. So we actually have one river gauge in Maryland. I believe this is Maryland. No, actually, this might be Virginia. Um, no, this is Maryland. It's major flood stage. All right, we have a major flood stage now. We have one of the river gauges here is the major flood stage. It is near California, Maryland. This is St. Mary's River at Great Mills, Maryland. Let's take a look at this. This is now a major flood stage. The record is 13.3 feet. Um, if we go down, they won't tell us when the record... Uh, um, historic record. This was August 20th, 1969, which that sounds like Hurricane Camille to me. I'm pretty sure that could be Camille. That could be a different storm as well. Um, another historic crest was 13 feet back in August of 2011, which I'm pretty sure, I'm 90% sure that was Hurricane Irene. All right. And some other um, recent crests as, though, as well. But we're at 11 and a half feet right now. Um, and some of the river gauges, depending on which ones you look at, some give you a forecast, a trend, uh, some don't. This one only has observation, depending on which type it is. Plus H is six feet. We're almost doubling that right now. All right. And it's going straight up. And it doesn't look like it's going down anytime soon. Keep in mind, though, the rivers definitely do rise when the rainfall is happening. But the, rain, the rivers usually peak a couple hours after the rainfall has stopped completely. Um, and that's because it gives a, the river a chance to absorb all the water. That because when the rain is falling, if the rain's falling so heavy that the ground can't absorb it much. But once the rainfall rates taper down, once the rain starts to move out of the region, that gives the, um, the soil around the river as well as the river itself to be able to soak in all that water and raise the, wa uh, the river a little bit more. So don't be surprised that if a couple hours or maybe even several hours after this, maybe six, seven, eight hours after this, that we're going to start to see the rivers continue to go up. All right, and I'm not going to go through every single river gauge. But we have a couple um, that are in moderate flood stage. All right, and actually, just breaking now, I think there is one right on the Maryland-Delaware border. This is Big Elk Creek at Elk Mills, Maryland. This is now in major flood stage. I don't believe it was before. Um, and no wonder. It's going straight up. It was just in moderate stages, now in major. All right, I'm actually going to go through the effects because this one um, is definitely could impact more land. So going down here, let me see if, if it's there. All right, so looks like... At 10 feet, we're right now it's almost at 13 feet, which means main, um, main and bridge streets are submerged. So some submerged streets here are at major flood stage. Record is 14 and a half feet. So we'll see if we get there. Um, I don't think it's going to tell us when that was set. All right, so some rivers give you some river uh, gauges don't give you too much information. Um, there's also one on the tri-state border of Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, in a mi minor flood stage. All right, so a lot of rivers here are already overflowing their banks and and just wait all right just wait until this is all said and done all right so again we do have um plenty of uh, uh, take a look at delaware as well not too long ago um new around newcastle these were both at no flooding now they're now both of these river gauges are at minor flood stage delaware bay at reedy point i look at these pretty often and delaware river at delaware city another one i look at uh, pretty often is up in uh pennsylvania and jersey as well chester creek near chester pennsylvania um you guys are getting ready to get into major flood stage but the forecast looks like it may start to drop a little bit so hopefully that'll start to happen uh, but frankfurt creek has gone straight up you see all these river banks have gone straight up look at christiana river all right we are getting ready we're going to go into major flood stage in christiana river all right i don't know when when is the last time this has actually happened i i really don't know all right our record in christian on the christiana river it looks like it's forecast to get to 13 and a half feet at its peak the record is um Record is 13.9 feet due to Hurricane Irene in 2011. So we could even get to that. And if that does happen, flooding will increase. Evacuations will take place in Newark and Christiana, and roads will become impassable. All right. 
Again, this is Christiana Rivera Cooch's bridge right near Route 896 and 72 and 95 on the turnpike. Uh, let's look at one more river gauge here before the end of this video. Um, let's actually go a little bit farther to the north around Redding. Okay, this is the Cooper, uh, near, um, actually it's a little bit far south actually, Cooper River at Haddonfield. You guys are getting ready to go into the action stage, but notice how it's starting to trend up a little bit. All right, don't worry, this will keep going up. So we'll see. All right, rainfall, the, the flooding threat has been very serious. This is definitely a very unique storm and nothing, I, nothing like it for me. Okay, I was actually outside earlier, actually during the thick of the storm, just going outside. And it, it was it was really mesmerizing just to watch the storm. But again, um, if a tornado warning is issued, um, we're starting to see them taper down to the mid-Atlantic. But if tornado warnings are issued, get to that lowest level uh, in your home, whether it be interior wall, away from all the windows, even a severe thunderstorm warning, take this seriously. But we're seeing a lot more tornado warnings than severe thunderstorm warnings because tropical systems usually produce a, three spin-ups of tornadoes. So thank you guys for watching today's video. I am Dweller Dude, sending off till next time. Please don't forget to check out my Isaiah's um, footage video. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.